We're going to explore how a web request makes its way into your PHP application's code base. What converts a HTTP request into something that PHP can read and run. Now the flow works like this. You have Nginx accepting web requests. You have PHP FPM, which acts as an application gateway. It converts HTTP or Nginx converts HTTP to fast CGI, which PHP FPM reads. And then PHP FPM spins up processes of your application of PHP and that runs your code and that code can read details about that web request. PHP FPM is a gateway. This means it's a thing that sits between your Nginx, between your web server and your code. It converts HTTP or the data it's received over FastCGI into a PHP process and fills in all of your things that PHP needs to uh, read a web request and understand that it's a web request, right? Like your post super global, get, query parameters, the body of the HTTP request, if it has content in the body, and all that good stuff that has to do with web requests. Most languages have a gateway that sits between a web server and their code base, especially uh, older programming languages like Ruby or Python and all that good stuff, uh, PHP included. And other languages, newer languages, typically have HTTP built into them. So they actually don't need this gateway uh, intermediary thing. You might be able to take Nginx to accept a web request and shunt it off directly to an application over um, an HTTP proxy. It just resends the HTTP request to your code in those cases. That might be like Golang, Node.js, and other more modern languages that have HTTP built in directly. But we're dealing with PHP here, so we have this gateway thing in the middle. So let's go ahead and see those three components, right? Nginx, PHP FPM, and then your code that actually runs the uh, web request. So first we're gonna check out the Nginx configuration. So here we just have an example one, uh, appchipperci.com for this uh, Nginx configuration for chipperci.com. And we'll see just a few things, right? This is Nginx configuration. And all it's gonna do is basically um, understand a web request is for PHP and shunt it off, send it off to PHP FPM, right? So we have try files here. It's gonna to try to find the URI given um, and relate it to find it as a file on the uh, disk drive of the server at the location up here under root, right? So it's gonna find a file here if it exists uh, for this web request. And this typically works for static content like your CSS files and JS. Um, if it doesn't find a file, it's gonna say, oh, maybe it's a directory it's being requested. And if that directory exists, it'll serve it as a directory looking for these index files, right? So if it's just a directory, it doesn't know what file to actually serve. So it's gonna look for index.html, index.htm or index.php. If there's no file found um, in the directory, right? So it's not a file directly on the disk. It's not a directory on the disk. All right, it's just gonna say, we're gonna shunt this off, give it off to index.php and append any query strings to it as well. Down here, we have another location block and it's gonna say, oh, this request ends in .php. So let's pass it off to PHP FPM. It's gonna do a few things to do that. So fastcgi split path info, it's gonna find where a file called .php exists in the uh, request URI, and it's gonna split it at that. So anything after the PHP file becomes the URI of that request, right? So a lot of times uh, you'll see something like index.php foo bar, it's gonna split on index.php because it sees the file ending .php in there and grab anything after that. And that anything after it will become the URI of the request, right? This is the pretty URL thing that is so popular back in the day of WordPress and Apache configuration and all that good stuff. It's going to next pass the uh, request data via FastCGI over to PHP FPM at this Unix socket file. PHP FPM can actually listen over a network like 127.001, right? And that means PHP FPM can even be in other servers, but in this case, it's on the same server as Nginx. It's configured to listen for new requests, new data on a socket file, uh, a local socket file on the same uh, server. And so Nginx is gonna pass it off to that socket file. The index file is just index.php, whatever. And the next interesting thing is this included uh, fastcgi params file. And we can just go ahead and take a look at that to see what's in it. And you might actually recognize this stuff because most of this is what ends up in your uh, PHP server global, right? And your PHP server global has the stuff, query, string, request method, content type, all that good stuff. Uh, and we are just instructing Nginx to populate that data and pass it off to PHP FPM as a fast CGI parameter. Okay, so that's Nginx is passing to PHP FPM. PHP FPM is doing a thing with all that data and shunting it off to your application. How does it do that? I don't know, right? It's written in C. I don't read C, I don't write C. I don't know what all this stuff is doing, 
But if we want to look at it, you can see this request.c file and you know a bunch of other stuff inside the PHP FPM code base, which is part of the PHP source code. And you can go ahead and look at it and it's doing stuff. It's taking all the data passed into it from Nginx in this case, and it's getting the request body that's also passed in from Nginx and it's creating PHP processes and spitting them up and running them, right? So it just runs our code. Now our code finally gets run. And now typically, or back in the day, we would just see our PHP code. That's all we kind of saw in this whole process. And we would say, oh, the post variable, the super global variable is populated, the get variable is populated. We can get our request body, all that good stuff. Now we have nice abstractions over it, right? So in Laravel or Symfony or some other framework, there's usually an HTTP abstraction that reads in that um, information and converts it to a HTTP request object that just has all that stuff nicely encapsulated for us. Laravel uses the Symfony classes under the hood, and that will typically do something like create from global. So it's going to create an instance of the request class from the super global, so like a get and post and uh, the headers and the cookies and the files and the server and all that good stuff. Uh, files here being files someone uploaded if someone uploaded files from this web request. Server variables, that's all the stuff that po is populated by PHP FPM. And I think the only other thing that's missing here, right? This is kind of all the data you need that's um, related to web requests. The server stuff also includes the headers, by the way. Um, but it also needs to get the body of the request if there is one. And that typically does something like this, file get contents and grabs PHP uh, colon colon input, which just grabs the body of the request if there is one. All right, so that's it. Basically, we just have this fancy PHP code that uh, takes in all the information that PHP has available to it, grabs the body of the request if there is one, makes it a request object, and then we are off to the races. We just uh, use that as our abstraction, as our uh, thing that represents the web request, and we can grab all the HTTP-related information we might need to write our code, right? To uh, match against our configured routes, and then run a controller, and then talk to our models, all that good stuff. This is what kicks it off, this request object.